Mineral oil is cheap and the purest form of oil you can get. But synthetic oil is developed in a laboratory and costs more than twice the price. So it must be better, right? Or maybe a mix of the two is the best of both worlds. Like this semi-synthetic. Well, today we're going to go over the differences between mineral and synthetic oil. What makes each one good and bad and which you should put in your bike. Because your bike deserves only the best. Mineral oil, aka conventional oil, was around long before the synthetic stuff. It's as close to crude oil pumped out of the ground as you can get, but obviously heavily refined. And because it takes less effort to make, it's cheap. Whereas fully synthetic oil, as the name suggests, is synthetically created by scientists in a laboratory. And as a result, is the best possible lubrication your engine can get. But all that effort comes at a price. Synthetic oils contain fewer impurities and have far more consistent particle sizes than mineral oil, which allows it to flow through your engine better. But there's a lot more to it than that. Because it has been carefully concocted, it can cope with extreme temperatures better than conventional oil. Whether it's in a cold climate or just during initial startup, when the oil has a higher viscosity, meaning it's thick and flows slowly, it can still do its job of lubricating. It's the same on the other end of the spectrum too. When you've been wringing your bike's neck in the middle of summer and it's nearing boiling point, synthetic oil will still be up to the job. Synthetic also degrades slower. Combine that with its better lubricity and you can go longer without changing your oil. So service intervals can be extended. Less friction also means better fuel consumption, as components can move with less resistance. So technically, the same results in slightly more power too. But most importantly, using synthetic oil will put less wear on your engine parts, which is ultimately the job of oil. So needless to say that synthetic oils are generally used in high performance engines, just like in motorcycles. However, the two types of oils still have their similarities. And I'm guessing that you enjoy learning new things since you're watching this video. Well, I recently found an intuitive way to learn something new every day with Brilliant.org, who have graciously sponsored this video. Recently, I've been doing their course on scientific thinking that includes topics like gears and pulleys that closely relate to motorcycles and helps me with videos like this one. Their interactive illustrations and charts, combined with being able to do just a few minutes every day, makes learning something that can improve your life attainable for everyone. I definitely wasn't someone who did well at school, because it was often overwhelming. But the world's most successful people are determined to never stop learning, which is exactly why Brilliant offers thousands of courses like AI and computer science, all the way to physics and maths. And new courses are always being added. To see for yourself what Brilliant has to offer, free for a full 30 days, go to brilliant.org forward slash chaos courses or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will receive 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. But back to mineral and synthetic oil similarities. Both of them have a shelf life of up to five years if stored correctly. Both contain additives that are beneficial to your engine, like protection against corrosion and oxidation, as well as detergents and anti-foaming agents. So do they only still produce mineral oil like this for cheapskates who hate their bikes? Well, no. You see, some classic and vintage bikes still require conventional oils because that's what they were designed to use. They're often prone to oil leaks with modern low viscosity oils, presumably because they were built with higher tolerances. Mineral oil is also sometimes recommended during the break-in process of an engine because while you're running in a new engine, some wear and tear is actually a good thing. And sometimes synthetic oils can hinder this process because they're too good at their job. And then we have the middleman, semi-synthetic or blended oils. They're exactly how they sound. They're a mix of mineral and synthetic oils 
to give you some of the benefits of synthetic oils while bringing the price point down a bit. So ultimately there's an oil for every bike and a bike for every oil. A vintage bike requires mineral oil, a slow revving commuter will be more than happy with semi-synthetic and a high revving superbike on the cutting edge of engine materials demands synthetic oil. But the truth is, no matter what type of oil you run, changing it frequently and running the appropriate grade of oil in your bike, like your owner's manual suggests, are still the most important things to do. But anyway, let me know which type of oil your bike requires, share this video with a friend who rides an electric bike, and I'll see you on the next ride.